Hey guys, how you doing this week? The module we're going to focus on for Monday and Tuesday is going to be the Electude module on the um, Harmonic Vibration Balancer. And I've changed a few things up to make it a little easier for you guys to keep track of the weekly work here. Um, so what I've done is, if you click on the Content tab, uh, you likely have a bunch more options here than I do, but uh, you'll see where it says My Individual Content. And you're now going to see a folder called Service eLearning. If you click on that one, uh, what you are going to see is the weekly modules broken up by week now. Instead of lumping them all together to make it easier for you guys to keep track of what's going on, I've put these in here by date. This week, we're going to work on this one here for uh, 4, 6, and 4, 7, Monday, Tuesday. And at the second half of the week here, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll get into a different project I'll we'll talk about later. So we're going to start that one. And the harmonic vibration dampener is a big part on the front of the engine. When you guys took your engines apart, it was the piece we were using to rotate the engine. It also has a big job of smoothing out the engine. So let's get started with this. It first wants us to click on the flywheel. So we'll click that here. And we got that right. Now let's read the top. It says the crankshaft is attached to the flywheel. The flywheel is a heavy, the flywheel is heavy and has high inertia. Now, a flywheel is one option. I'm going to ask you guys, what's the other option it could be? On the case of our Honda engines that we took apart, what was it? Yeah, it was the uh, flex plate. That would be what takes its place because the torque converter bolts up to that. So, flywheel would be one option. A second option would be the flex plate for the torque converter. In any case, we're going to play along the way Electu does it. It says, at every power stroke, great force is exerted on the crankshaft. Since the flywheel has high inertia, the crankshaft is twisted. This goes back to the merry-go-round video I showed you guys. The faster things spin, the more centrifugal force you have, people are flying off the merry-go-round. It's the same concept. After the power stroke, the force exerted on the crankshaft decreases. The crankshaft wants to return to its original shape and springs back. This causes torsional vibrations in the engine and transmission. This also places significant tension on the cam belts, otherwise known as the timing belts, and accessory drive belts, otherwise known as serpentine belt, which stresses the driven components. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We already selected the flywheel, so let's go to the second one. And what you're going to see is the crankshaft literally twists a little bit. Every power stroke, it flexes, it twists. It's got a torsional twist to it. And if we don't find a way to cope with that, it pretty much abuses everything else in the engine. So we've got to absorb those vibrations. So this question says, which statements about the flywheel are correct? The flywheel has high inertia. That's true. It wants to stay spinning. The flywheel is attached to the crankshaft. That's also true on this side right here. The flywheel is made of aluminum. That one's going to be false. They could be. Typically, they're made out of steel, though. The flywheel's heavy. It definitely is. And we'll go to the third one. Put the crankshaft in the position where it is twisted out of its original shape the most. Then click check. So we're going to get the slider bar here. And as I move this along, we've got the power stroke going on up top. And now you're going to see there's a lot of twisting happening because my piston is pushing down on my crankshaft journal and it is trying to twist it. It's not trying, it actually is twisting it. So we've got our lines twisted here and we got it right. We're going to go to the fourth one. What is the distortion of the crankshaft from its original shape called? That's going to be twisting. So we're twisting it out of shape. And that's what we have to deal with. Now, put the crankshaft in the position where it has resumed to its original shape after twisting. So we're going to move the slider bar. We've twisted out of shape. And now you're going to see it spring back into place right about there. My lines are nice and straight. So it just went through a whole uh, mechanical change where it twisted. And now it's sprung back to its original shape. So believe it or not, for as heavy as this piece is, it actually has all of that happen. The twisting of the crankshaft in returning to its original shape causes vibrations. What are these vibrations called? 
they are going to be called torsional vibrations, otherwise known as twisting vibrations. And that's what we have to absorb. What happens when torsional vibrations occur? Greater stress on the serpentine belt. That is true. Higher engine temperature. That's going to be false. It doesn't affect the engine temperature. More mechanical stress on driven components. Definitely true. And vibrations in the engine. That's also true. And vibrations in the, I think I said engines, vibrations, transmissions, and then vibration in the engines. So this one little motion causes a lot of stress on a lot of pieces in our engine. We're going to go to the second one at the top. So it says a harmonic vibration dampener must absorb the torsional vibrations in the crankshaft. Besides these vibrations, the harmonic vibration dampener must also dampen the vibrations from the serpentine belt, which are caused by uneven rotation of the engine. The vibration dampener is installed in the crankshaft pulley. It consists of two separate parts. The part onto which the crankshaft fits, known as the inner ring, and the part on which the belt runs, which is the outer ring. The inner and outer rings are separated by a thin layer of rubber. Click on the vibration dampener. So over here on the left side, this is where my belts would normally run. You can see the harmonic vibration dampener better on the animation on, on the right in the animation. So down here. What is the task of the harmonic vibration dampener? Reduce vibrations caused by the uneven rotations of the engine. That's true. You're going to see these lines kind of shifting. We'll talk about those more in a minute. So the engine isn't rotating really evenly. We want to smooth it out. Reducing bending vibrations. That is not true. Uh, reducing centrifugal vibrations. That's going to be false. But then reducing torsional vibrations, that's going to be true. Go to the third one. Find the following components in the zoomed in figure. So we've got the outer race right here that the belt rides along. We've got this layer of rubber in the middle. And then we're going to have the inner one that bolts up to the crankshaft. And now we're going to go to the third option at the top. So when my engine changes speed, things actually smooth out a lot. Because everything's moving so fast, the vibrations aren't as noticeable and they kind of smooth themselves out. So at higher revolutions, the crankshaft rotates evenly. The vibration dampener then rotates evenly along with the crankshaft. At low revolutions, for example, when starting, the vibration dampener does not rotate evenly along with the crankshaft. During the power stroke, the crankshaft accelerates and the inner ring accelerates with it. Owing to inertia, the outer ring does not accelerate at the same speed. The rubber dampening layer accommodates this difference in speed by deforming. This damps the torsional vibration. The rubber dampening layer can twist a maximum of 20 degrees. When the air conditioning is switched on, for example, the belt and outer ring with it rotate more e slowly. The rubber dampening layer accommodates this difference in speed by deforming. So in the first question, it says, in this animation, you see the difference between the inner and outer rings of the harmonic vibration dampener at low revolution, so low engine speed. Study the anim animation and proceed to the next question. So what we notice is every time we get a power stroke up here, you see the flash, the explosion. What you're going to notice is the inside speeds up because the piston's being pushed really hard by that explosion. But my outside circle is going to stay at the same consistent speed, and that's what smooths out my engine. So we're going to go to the second one. You can view the animation better by using the slide bar. What do you notice about the harmonic vibration dampener at low revolutions? So as we slide this along, so we've got a power stroke going on right here, and you're going to see the center part of it that's connected to the crankshaft is going to accelerate. It's going to move faster 
than the outside one. And that's what allows it to smooth out so that all the parts being driven by the accessory belts aren't being abused. They don't have that kind of whiplash effect every time there's a power stroke going on. So it's smoothed out. Now we got another power stroke happening and it accelerated again because of the power stroke over here. And then you're gonna see another one. So smoothed out. So outside stays the same speed. Inside is kind of like getting pushed along unevenly. So let's answer these questions. The rubber dampening layer accommodates the difference in speed by deforming. And that's what we're seeing right here. That black layer is kind of stretching every time there's a power stroke to make things a little more even. That's true. Owing to inertia, the outer ring does not accelerate at the same speed. That's true also. The crankshaft and inner ring accelerate with it, accelerating during the power stroke. That is true. And during the power stroke, the inner ring runs ahead of the outer ring. That's also true. So it kind of gets pushed ahead, forced ahead. Gets a little extra burst of power. And we'll go to the third one. In this running animation, you see the difference between the inner and outer rings of the harmonic vibration dampener at high revolutions. Study the animation and proceed to the next question. Well, what we notice is we can't see anything because it's, it's going so fast that everything's actually really smooth. And let's click to the next one here. Go to number four. And now as we move this slider bar across, so we've got a power stroke right there. See our little explosion happening. Well, you notice it's because everything's moving so fast, there's no time for it to actually bump ahead. Um, and there's not really a need for it because everything's running really fast. It's actually smoothed itself out. So let's answer this question here. The crankshaft and the inner ring with it accelerate during the compression stroke. That's actually going to be false because they don't. They're actually going at the same speed now because everything's nice and even. The inner and outer rings do not rotate much relative to one another. That's going to be true. They basically stay at the same spot as we move this along. Even during all the power phases, it's really not changing at all. The rubber dampening layer does not have much dampening to do. That's also going to be true. So this is part of the reason why highway driving is so much better for the engine, because you don't have all that abuse happening inside the engine. Everything's kind of running nice and smooth and even, um, and it makes our engines last longer also. So now we're going to go through, and this is my air conditioner compressor right here. And when you turn the compressor on, it actually takes a lot of effort to spin this thing. So it, the belt is what's spinning it, and so it's like, whoa, it's kind of a, it wants to slow everything down, but our engine's not going to let that happen. So what we're going to see is our vibration dampener is going to take up the abuse, and it's going to allow things to give a little bit so that my compressor um, doesn't destroy everything else. So it says you can, <clears throat> you can turn on the air conditioner on and off with the switch. What do you notice when the air conditioner starts up? So we're going to click the button right here, and you're going to watch these lines. And you notice how that outside line is like, whoa, it slowed way down because my air conditioner suddenly took a lot of effort to spin it. And so my rubber layer um, took up that difference so that everything stays spinning at the same speed and kind of let the engine catch up to what was going on. So we turn it off, we turn it back on again, and same thing, because we're spinning that compressor, it just needs a minute to catch up, so my rubber layer allows for that unevenness. So the outer ring turns more slowly when it switches on. And that is definitely true. It kind of slowed down for a second, then it caught up again. The rubber dampening layer accommodates the difference in speed by deforming. That's also true. And the inner ring does not slow down. That's also true. So the inner ring stayed connected up with the engine and with the engine and its speed. The outer ring stayed connected up with the compressor and its speed. The rubber middle piece made up the difference. All right, now we've finished our module on the harmonic vibration dampener. Um, one of the things I want to point out, these things do go bad. It is possible that rubber piece, it just wears out like anything made from rubber. 
it finally cracks and kind of gives up. So this piece um, may need to be serviced um, every once in a while. Typically, they last the life of the car, but it is common that they uh, wear out every every so often. So if you have a engine that's vi vibrating really bad, or every time you turn on the air conditioning, it's squealing really bad, one of the things you definitely want to check out are is the belts, and then also make sure that the harmonic vibration dampener is spinning the way it's supposed to be spinning. All right, thanks for getting the module done, and hopefully I will see you guys soon.